of pilgrims for the 2018 Hajj is progressing steadily at different departure centers across the country. Kaduna International Airport is one of such departure points from whereabout 1,068 pilgrims from Kaduna State have so far been airlifted by Max Air. The pilgrims alongside officials were drawn from Zaria, Giwa, Igabi, Kubo, and Kagaruko local government areas of the state. Addressing the first batch of pilgrims before departing for Saudi Arabia, Kaduna State Governor Malam Nasser El Rufai urged them to be good ambassadors of the state and Nigeria while in the Holy Land. He further states that Kaduna government has put in place measures to improve the management of Hajj in the state with a view to making operations more efficient and effective. Overseer of the Kaduna State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board, Imam Hussein Suleiman Ikara, enjoyed the pilgrims to respect the laws of the host country so as to complete their hard rights without hitches. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria has signed agreement with Flyners Nigeria for the airlift of Nigerian pilgrims during the 2018 Hajj operations. The ceremony took place at the Commission's headquarters in Abuja. Nakon Chairman Barista Abdullah Mukhtar Mohammed signed on behalf of the Commission, while the Director of Business Support of Flyners, Khalid Suleiman Aldini, signed on behalf of the company. Speaking in an interview shortly after the ceremony, Flyners General Sales Agent Umar Kaila urged Nakan and other stakeholders involved in Hajj operation to intensify pilgrims' enlightenment on the importance of adhering to flight schedules. We will conform to the program that we have given the Commission and we will ensure that we will follow it strictly to the latter. So as long as we will get the cooperation of the state, the cooperation of NACON, the cooperation of people issuing the BTA, the cooperation of the airport of, uh, agencies, will definitely deliver. The Health Monitoring Center at the King Abdul Aziz International Airport Jeddah in Saudi Arabia has completed the training of its staff who have been engaged to identify and treat infectious diseases as well as monitor pilgrims in Mecca and Medina. The staff, numbering 2,631, include doctors, technicians, and administrators. Also in a related development, the Saudi Red Crescent Authority is stepping up its plans to offer emergency services for pilgrims at the Grand Mosque in Mecca and on all roads leading to the city as well as sacred sites during Hajj exercise. <laughs> The 2018 Hajj exercise is underway, and Nigerian pilgrims have started arriving in Medina. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NAKAN, has made adequate arrangements for their stay in Medina to Munawara. These arrangements involve transporting pilgrims from the airport to their hotels or apartments, as well as setting up medical facilities and providing them with meals, among others. As soon as the pilgrims arrive, Nakan officials, supported by the Medina coordinator, 
Alhaji Ahmed Megari ensure that every one of them has a bed space. Collecting the keys or electronic door scanners enables the pilgrims move into their rooms. Nakan Deputy Coordinator in Medina, Olayi Ola Abdul Salam, explains more about the arrangements put in place by the Commission. We on our part, we have prepared accommodation cards ready for the arrival of the pilgrims so far to fast track the allocation of the rooms for the pilgrims. Distribution of the rooms is based on the number of beds in each room to ensure that every pilgrim has a bed to himself or herself. And we make sure that females are being considered to be on the lower floor while the male are being on the upper floor. What do pilgrims think about the quality of the accommodation being provided? I this place is very close to the, uh, or to, the, uh, to the mosque and the Haji Commission is well prepared because he doesn't want us to suffer before we go to the mosque and before we return. The accommodation, the location of the accommodation to the masjid and uh, the facilities, the feeding arrangement is okay and they should be commended. Provisions have also been met to give pilgrims balanced meals through breakfast and dinner. The pilgrims also comment on this arrangement. I, I've been given the type of food I want. I ate, uh, I'm eating even now. Chicken, you can see it in my hand. I was given uh, rice with uh, water, with fruit, and what have you. Why do I need more than this? In fact, all the food given to us is very rich. They treat us well, even more than the one we expect that we are going to meet here. On healthcare services to pilgrims during the Hajj, Nakon, in collaboration with state pilgrims' boards, have made adequate arrangements for effective healthcare delivery for those that will be in need, especially at the primary healthcare level. Dr. Hamid Uliman is the head of medical operations in Medina. He sheds more light on the clinics that have been set up. Essentially, we do here is to make sure that we offer primary health care services based on the agreement we have with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, because they are responsible for all secondary and tertiary health care delivery system to all pilgrims from all over the world. So we have already uh, kick-started activities in the uh, Medina headquarters medical clinic and uh, by God's grace we have the mandate to establish several outposts depending on the number of pilgrims that arrive Medina before the airport and the roads to Medina are closed. Being primary health care centers, the clinics will focus on treatment of such illnesses as malaria, typhoid, among others. The National Commission makes sure that there are always enough drugs to cover for tropical diseases. Malaria, typhoid, uh, common cold, whatever. But it also goes beyond this because we also have the mandate to supply uh, drugs for hypertension, diabetes, asthma, all these common chronic illnesses. We have the mandate and we have the drugs. And that's just to supplement the restriction by Kingdom of Saudi Arabia about bringing drugs into the country. Dr. Hamidu said the medical team is well equipped to attend to the health needs of Nigerian pilgrims while in Saudi Arabia. The adoption of the electronic medical record has made it easy for the registration and treatment of pilgrims. Usually when they come, the first thing we ask them is the passport number of the program. Everybody who has come into the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia must have come into this country with a passport. So the passport number will be imputed into the electronic medical record and it will bring out the data of the patient because they've already been imputed. If for any reason that person's passport number doesn't come up, there's provision for us to add the person, provided the person has his passport number with him, we'll add it and then we'll go through the process of taking the vital signs, blood pressure, temperature and all that. Different drugs have also been supplied for the benefit of pilgrims that fail sick. Our pharmacists are fully on ground and our 
medication also is uh, this talk is very encouraging and uh, we are now trying to sort out the the stock in such a manner that uh, uh, the dispensing will be very easy and uh, very effective and efficient. One of the ambulances made available by Nakan has been stationed for operations. It came in handy some few days ago when some pilgrims took ill and were taken to Nakan main clinic for treatment. With more Nigerian pilgrims expected in Medina, the National Hajj Commission is leaving nothing to chance to ensure that all plans are properly executed so that pilgrims will have value for their money. <laughs> In the course of their visit to Medina, pilgrims must observe the do's and don'ts stipulated in Islam. What are those things pilgrims should understand to avoid going against Islamic injunctions? On Hajj Talk tonight, Imam Muhammad Obiahu Aja provides answers to these and other questions. He begins by highlighting the importance of visiting Medina. All what is required of a Muslim or a pilgrim to do during Hajj, all the activities are in Makkah al Mukarramah. So, but it's an opportunity, as I said earlier, that when a Muslim comes for Hajj, it's a very great, great opportunity for him or her to visit Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and say Salam. What acts of worship are allowed and those things that are forbidden when pilgrims visit the mosque of the Prophet? Once you visit Medina, your target is to go and pray in Masjid al-Haram, in Masjid al and, uh, the Holy Prophet's mosque, which Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us himself that our prayers in this Holy Mosque, that is Masjid al-Haram and his mosque, is better 1,000 times than any, other, than any prayer offered in any other mosque. After praying in his mosque, what else? To visit him and when you go to visit him, what do you do there? You are not going there to ask him. Ask him. He is not, uh, he is not God. He is not Allah. What people go there to do is to go and pray for him. Just ask Allah for blessing. Assalamu alaikum ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace and blessings of Allah. Just what we do in Tahiyya, uh, or what we do when, his, na when, he, when he, his name is mentioned, is the same thing people, Muslims or pilgrims, are supposed to do when they go to his uh, grave. How should pilgrims conduct themselves when going into the Rauda? Some we go to, they want to enter Rauda. By force, they will spend, they will spend, even they will try to even break the laws, try to enter Rauda. It's not about the whole area, it depends on your intention. If you go and you see the crowd, is, your safety is much more than, because Allah knows your intention. If you go to, uh, to, into, to, go to Rauda and there's no place, the place is too crowded, stay at any place that is available and pray with that intention. Allah will accept, will accept your prayers. Is it mandatory for pilgrims to observe 40 prayers at the Prophet's mosque before leaving Medina? They have this intention or this notion that they must stay pray 40 prayers 40 prayers i think i'd have to me i've not seen uh, any hadith or any any eye of the holy quran supporting that supporting this uh, kind of a uh, notion you understand me all we are told is that if you come and you spend one day or you come you spend one hour in medina do the uh, ziyara pray in the masjid al haram in masjid al nabawi do the ziyara of prophet muhammad visit baqir it's enough for you Muhammad Obiahu Aja warned pilgrims to avoid doing anything that is not allowed by Sharia. When our pilgrims come to, to uh, Medina, just like we have, we have advised them while in Nigeria, when they come here, they should not engage in anything that is not purely worship. That is not, uh, they, they should not engage in anything that is, will distract them from the main reason why they come here, why they came here, which is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Travel advice for this week will address how pilgrims should socially conduct themselves in Medina before going to Mecca for the performance of their Hajj rituals. Taking us through this is the former chairman of Hajj Monitors of Nigeria, Hamon, Al Hajj Usman Gumi. He begins by talking about how pilgrims should behave and conduct themselves. Medina is the city of the Prophet, and whoever visits Medina should assume he is visiting the Prophet during his lifetime, and he is supposed to conduct himself in an orderly manner, respect himself protect the rights and privileges of other fellow pilgrims like him and make sure he does exactly what took him there to do, which is the Ibadah. Observe all the five daily prayers in the Prophet Mosque because the Prophet wasallam said, a prayer in my mosque is equivalent to 1,000 prayers in other mosques. So this opportunity that they have, which so many will not have this kind of opportunity in their lifetime, they should make sure they utilize every bit of it. He warns pilgrims against buying gifts in Medina before moving to Mecca for the Hajj proper. Some of the pilgrims will be tempted to start the buying spree. They should know that they have a lot of time ahead of them and whatever they can see in Medina, they will find it in other places when they completed their Hajj. They should eat well, drink well, so that they stay healthy, because there's a big task ahead of them, which is the actual Hajj that will come in some few days. He advised pilgrims, particularly women, who take interest in fixing gold tooth, to identify those licensed to do such things to avoid falling into the hands of quacks. Ladies, women who have been there, they usually say that the gold of Medina is the best so, and the most affordable. So there's the temptation for them to want to go and put that uh, gold tooth. But they should be careful. They should go in group if they want to go. They shouldn't go alone and uh, find someone who know exactly where it is best uh, fixed. He advised the pilgrims to always move in groups and be good ambassadors of the country by obeying all the rules and regulations of Saudi Arabia. They should remember a Muslim is the brother of every Muslim. He should see every tribe, race and color that he finds there as his fellow Muslim brothers. He shouldn't do anything that will harm them. We have tendency to be very noisy in places. We should also behave ourselves and conduct ourselves in an orderly manner. Obey all the rules and regulations. Avoid stampedes in crowded places. If a place is very crowded, you can wait and do it in another time. There is no fix stipulated that you must do certain things at the certain time. So if there's stampede, wait a little bit until it's pacified and then you can go and do it in a peaceful manner. Because at the end of the day, if you harm yourself in trying to do an ibadah, instead of getting an, a reward, you end up uh, getting a sin for that, for injuring yourself and injuring others. <laughs> This week on Spotlight, our focus is on the activities of Jigawa State Pilgrims Welfare Board. The board was established in 1991 when the state was created out of Kano State. Just as other pilgrims boards, agencies or commissions, Jigawa State Pilgrims Board has the mandate of coordinating Hajj operations for pilgrims registering from the state. The Executive Secretary of the Board, al Hajisani Al-Hassan Muhammad, said the State Governor, Muhammad Badaru Abubakar, is supporting the Board to enable it function effectively. We have every support from the government for the services of the pilgrims since it is a welfare board. 
uh, whatever uh, we write for the success of this operation, we don't have any problem from the government. Jigawa, we are not collecting any administrative charges, which we are charging, charging our pilgrims. Everything is free. All of that, uh, the rest of the uh, of the fund is coming from the government. Jigawa State Pilgrims Board has embraced the reforms introduced by the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, Nakan. The reforms relate to the new approach of securing accommodation for pilgrims in the Holy Land, the provision of health care services, and the use of ICT to facilitate the various aspects of the Hajj exercise. Well, alhamdulillah, now we have already sent our medical team uh, to the National Hajj Commission. That means uh, doctors, our nurses, our pharmacists. Then the, uh, the, the National Health Commission, to, they wanted to make it one, one body. For efficient service delivery to pilgrims, the various departments of the board, namely operations, administration and finance, and propagation and enlightenment work harmoniously. Every stakeholder, we used to give him his right. And even our staff and the head of the department, each head of the department, he, he will stay uh, and sit down together with his uh, staff, and they will they, they, they will sit down and get the ideas from different his staff. So whatever they agreed, then we are given them a free hand just to go and um, uh, and, and implement what they they think that they will improve and uh, the work of the pilgrims. With 2018 Hatch airlift underway, Jigawa State is leaving nothing to chance to ensure a successful outing for its pilgrims. Currently, we have known all that will travel, and we have even started inserting amount for BTS for the irrespective of every pilgrim that has built his way as fair. And we have already discovered air carriers. I have started developing the flight uh, schedule areas out of all the local government areas of the state. And uh, what we normally do, uh, we arrange the local government. If the local government, if poor local government, the number allocated to the local government, four of them will build and apply them with arrange according that, that, that manner. Then followed by the, the next team, after the last team. All things are, being equal are ready before we call the pilgrims. BTA will be ready, the abusers will be ready, we calculate the number of pilgrims because we don't want we don't have a we don't want to have a situation whereby pilgrims will come to the camp and will, come, will be left without traveling to Saudi Arabia. So we call the exact number of pilgrims that will travel to, to Saudi Arabia on that particular flight. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika lak labbaik. Inna alhamda wa naimata lak wal mul. Pilgrims Enlightenment Campaign is also a priority at the Jigawa State Pilgrims Board. Idan Alhaji Yesa Mukansa Amikati, Umayda Akasani, Zaini Yane, Yedulla Duban Da Akakaranta Damu. And after that, lectures were delivered by different organ organizations, representatives. That is, for example, NDL Iman will come and talk to them on the way on rules and regulations of the kind of items that are prohibited here in Nigeria to carry to Saudi Arabia. Like an uh, immigration officer will talk to them or will give to them or will explain to them on even how to handle the passport. On the scale of performance, the Jigawa State Pilgrims Board has been placed in Category A, having fulfilled all the requirements laid out by Nakan as a precondition for such grading. This entails having a place in the structure, staffing, and operational capacity for that grade. For this year's Hajj, Jigawa State Pilgrims paid 1.4 million Naira for the Hajj fare package. This is 63,000 Naira less than 1.5 million Naira paid last year. The money for Hadaya is not included in the package. It is left optional for pilgrims to pay through Jai's bank if the type of hajj they want to perform has the provision for the slaughtering of animals. Furthermore, pilgrims will be given $800, which is equivalent to 244,000 naira 
for their basic travel allowance BTA. It is a flat rate set by Nakan for all pilgrims across the country. <laughs> Let's go. 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 Let's go.